Hello, and in this video, what I want to do is to simulate to well sim simulate the mathematical model for a system um, using LabVIEW. So the system particularly I'll be simulating is the system we have over here. Um, the second differential of y plus three times the first differential of y plus two times y is equal to three times a forcing function. A forcing function is just simply any input we have into the system. Now, the two different methods I'll use is, first of all, I'll just simulate this differential equation as is. Um, now, there are several ways in which we could simulate this, but then the two methods I'll pick for this video. First of all, it's just to simulate this differential equation exactly as is. First of all, by first of all making the second differential the subject of the equation. And the second method I'll use is the Laplace transform method. So let's start out with this first method. So first, I make the second differential of y the subject of the equation. Um, take everything here to the right hand side. We have d squared y dt squared is equal to minus 3 dy dt minus 2y plus 3f. Now, all we need to do is we can solve this by differentiating it, by integrating it twice. Second differential of y, if you integrate it twice, you get out y. So let's go ahead and do this in lab view. So here's my block diagram. And um, to do this simulation, I will use a control and simulation, control design and simulation um, toolbox. So the first thing to do whenever you want to um, use this toolbox, the first thing you probably want to do is to draw a control and simulation loop. So just um, to mention how I got there, right click on the block diagram, go to control and simulation, go to simulation and control and simulation loop. Okay, so we just simply go there, pick that, draw it out on the uh, block diagram. Now, um, I will also just pull an input on the signal generation. I'll just pick an input for this. Let's just pick the step signal since step signal is tends to be popular for um, system analysis. So I'll place a step signal on my block diagram inside the control and simulation loop. And then I'll go ahead and put a sync that's put an output on the block diagram, I'll go to graph utilities and say same type waveform, put that over there. So um, that places a waveform chart on my front panel, which will show the output. I just move this up here because I will put a second one down there um, a little later. Let me move this up. Yeah, and then move this up as well. So what I'll do is I'll have the first the mathematical model here, the differential, the differential equation model over here, and down here I'll have the um, transfer function representation. So um, coming back to the model that we had over here, we had that the second differential of y is equal to negative 3 dy dt minus 2y and that. So some things we definitely need. We're going to need two integrators. I'll come to control and simulation, simulation, um, continuous linear systems, integrator. I'll place an integrator over here. Then I'll just go ahead and copy this and paste. Um, on the screen. So now we have two integrators. So if we had the second differential of y coming in here, once we integrate it twice at the output of this point, we will have y. So let me go ahead and wire this to the um, waveform chart. Since this signal over here will be our y, I'll double click on an empty spot here and just type y so that we um, keep track of what the variable names are. Again, this is just a label. It really doesn't affect our program. I'll right click on each of these blocks and take off the um, labels that are visible just so that the diagram looks a little cleaner. Well, I could leave the waveform chart if I want. Um, There's a step signal, so I won't bother leaving it there. Okay, so let's drop the press a little closer. The output of the first integrator, so what the outputs we have on this end will be y. What we'll have at this point will be the differential, first differential of y, and at the input to this point, we'll have the second differential of y. Okay, so let me go ahead and write um, dy dt. Again, this is just a label. Um, it doesn't affect the program, just so that we can keep track. So we have dy dt, we have um, y there. I should probably increase this size so that it can be seen a little better. Um, uh, or again, I said it while doing it, so maybe I shouldn't really bother doing this so I don't wait, uh, make this video too long. But I've started this, uh, I can, this is probably a little too large. 18, and okay, so I'll just keep that there. Okay, so the YDT is what we have over here. 
and then we have y at the output over here. So input is the second differential. But again, from our mathematical model, what we see is that the second differential is equal to minus 3y of the first differential minus 2 of the differential plus 3 of our input function. We're using a step function as our input in this particular case. So we're going to multiply that by 3, subtract twice y, 2 of y from it and subtract 3 of the first differential from that. Good. So let's come back here. We know what we need. We need to have um, simulation, signal arithmetic. We need to have a gain, which we're going to multiply by a number of things. We also need to have, um, again, signal arithmetic. We need to have a summation. And I think that's about all that we need. So gain, we're going to use a gain in a couple of places. So I'll place one here, I'll place one there. Summation will be somewhere, and I'm just place it over here. So I'll double click on gain. Double click on gain and set the gain as three for this particular block. So we have three multiplying the fussing function, three times the fussing function. Um, okay, three times the fussing function. Then these ones, we're going to take the y dt and multiply by this first one, y and multiply by the second one. So that means we need the outputs to be on the right and the input on the left. So I'll right click on this block, go to reverse terminals. That flips the block around so that it has flipped the input and the outputs. Reverse terminals. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we're almost good. Let me just confirm what the gains are once again. Um, so we use, uh, so just give me a moment. We multiply y by 2 and um, divide the t by, or oh, okay, this by minus 2 and that by minus 3. So let's come back here and divide the t we're multiplying by negative 3. And my y will be multiplied by negative 2. Okay, so we have almost everything we need. The sum will be sent into that. Um, I'll just remove again the labels to just clean up the diagram just a little bit. So, um, I know that my divide dt is coming in here. I know that my y is coming in here. The outputs of these are going to be summed together. Now, this um, particular summer happens to have just two inputs. So, let's double click on it and manipulate things. How many inputs do we want? I'll say four. And if I know, I'll make it five in this case because I wanted to look in a certain way. So I'll turn that off. I'll make this and I'll make each of them a plus. So plus, 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 and then I'm making it five just so that we have nothing at the input. I want all the inputs to be on this side. I mean, you could draw it. You could say we have just three inputs and that'll be fine. But I'll I'll put it this way. Um, so this um, wire is no longer connected. I'll just reconnect over here. Um, I need to connect this to this gain and connect this to this gain. Now, this is a circle. Actually, it will probably look better as a rectangle. So let me just make it a rectangle. In which case, let me actually just make it three inputs instead of having five inputs like I had before. So um, I'll just remove all broken connections. Let me disconnect this and reconnect. So I have that here. I have that over here. Uh, my apologies for doing this a couple of times. Um, just shows a couple of ways in which this could be done just to show that this wires are separate and here's our model our model is done well it's almost done but let's just say it's done for now i can go ahead and run this and this will work so i could go ahead and just run this we have a step input coming um so i shall i'll open all the properties of the step input shortly but let me just go ahead and let it run since i have clicked on the run button okay so it's running as present once it's done you see the plot over here so this is what it looks like so a question we need to ask ourselves, first of all, this step inputs, okay, what, what are the settings? And we're just assuming that this, our input starts from an initial value of zero, goes to um, a final value of one, step time being one second in this particular case. We could change this to be whatever it is we want it to be. I'll simply leave it as okay for now. I could come to the integrator and here we need to ask a question, initial conditions, what are the initial conditions? Now, notice that each indicator, each integrator has its own properties. 
So you could have initial conditions for your dy dt. You could also have your initial conditions for your y. So let's say you had the initial value of y, initial um, the initial value of the first differential of y, you could set them in here. For now, I'll just leave both of them as zero. So we have zero initial conditions in this particular case. Now, the big main reason why I'm leaving it as zero initial conditions is that that makes it easy to come and take the Laplace transform model instead. This differential equation, instead of going down the route we just went to, um, right to draw the differential equation model, we could have just found the Laplace transform of this function. If we find the Laplace transform, we have this expression over here, this expression over here. If we have zero initial conditions, then this will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be zero, in which case our transfer function being an our output divided by input simply comes out to be this, 3 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. So since we have the transfer function model, now we can go ahead and draw the transfer function, um, use, just simply use the transfer function model here in our simulation. So let me come to continuous linear systems and pick transfer function. I'll place that here within the simulation loop. I'll place that within the simulation loop. I'll double click on it <clears throat> to make the value the same as what we had in our model. Our numerator is three. And then what we have in our denominator will be one, um, this was a 3 and that was a 2 so that we have um, so we have 3 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 let's just check to make sure that is correct that's 3 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 yes that is correct okay so I'll click on OK on this so that's our transfer function I'll copy this and paste it down here so that um, we have uh, another diagram to show us the outputs. So let me just rename this as out, outputs of the model and I'll call this outputs of TF model. Okay. Um, don't mind that there is a plot in here already. It's just there because, uh, let me see, I should be able to come to here, clear chart. Okay, let's go ahead and clear chart here as well, just so that um, everything is clear. And we, once we run it, we know we've run it. Now I need to send in my input signal into this point as well. So I, the same input signal, I just sent it down here so that we know that definitely we have the same input. Now we're gonna compare these two outputs just to be sure that they're actually doing the same thing. So I'll go ahead and run this. It will do its magic and then it runs. And so here we see that both systems respond in exactly the same way. See the, um, the step time is the same. Um, the shape of the curve really is the same. Settling time is about the same. Um, and so here, here are two different ways in which we could have actually um, simulated this particular system. Please take note that transfer function model will only work in a case where you have zero initial conditions. If you don't have zero initial conditions, you can't use the transfer function model as is, in which case you probably want to use a different model, for instance, a state space model, or you want to use this differential equation model as is. Okay, so I think that will be it for this video. Thank you.